How about if we stand up and worship God this morning and be thankful for our blessings? When upon life's billows you are tempted, tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, amen, one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Turn the harmonica down, please. Thank you. Who's got a blessing? morning when I got up, I heard God telling me I have to come to church. I wasn't going to come today because I was so depressed and I don't know why. It's got to be Satan is working to make me depressed. So I'm usually a happy person. So this morning I turned on the TV and I prayed and I heard a man give me a prayer. It'll be a blessing for everyone because everyone here has issues and things going wrong in their life. And it's so hard for us to get by without having the devil get in our way. So this prayer that this man said this morning to me lifted me up and told me that I need to come to church and share this blessing, this prayer with everyone here. We all love each other here in this church. We are a family. We need each other. And I want you to hear this prayer that this man said today to cause the Lord to get into my heart and tell me I have to share this with you. All of our problems that we have, the good Lord is watching out for us. And he wants me to tell you this prayer from this man that I heard this morning. Heavenly Father, as we gather in your presence at the beginning of this new day, we humbly seek your guidance, your strength, and your grace. May your light shine upon our paths, brightening our way with wisdom and love. Grant us the courage to face our challenges and the compassion to embrace others 
and the resolve to live according to your will. Let your peace guard our hearts and may our actions reflect your goodness. Bless us, O Lord, as we embark on this new day, knowing that with you by our side, we are well equipped for any journey. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you. We're going to sing another song, and then anybody who's got a blessing of, of how God, whether it's he got you out of bed this morning or he did something in your life special this week, we will share it. For making the sun to shine, putting the stars in the sky, for the flowers that bloom, the ocean so blue, thank you, Lord. For the sparrow that sings and makes sweet melody, for the rivers that flow, the rain and the snow, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for making me whole, saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for my whole family, for the joys you've given me, for the shoes on our feet, plenty to eat. Thank you, Lord. For the church where I worship and pray for the free <laughs> today, sweet spirit, I feel your presence so real. <laughs> I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. blessing. Amen. Barbara. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's, that's good news. I'm thankful for a house. Yeah, no snow. No snow. I guess Gary. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Okay. Uh, yep. Some things, sometimes there's too much of a good thing. <laughs> Anybody else? 
I walked into Sam's yesterday morning at 8 a.m. and the ladies in the store would go, where's all your little girls? I'm thinking, they're not here today, hallelujah. But you know, what a blessing. You know, that, that you go places with your little ones and people like to see them, you know? Yeah. It's a blessing, it's a tremendous blessing. It's not such a blessing when they're in the other room fighting with each other, like I deal with sometimes. I'm, I'm sure you don't ever have that to deal with. Anybody else got a blessing? This is our week to give thanks. I have a new great-grandson. Aww. All right. <laughs> Born healthy and safe, so that's great. Good. Amen. That's, a, that's, that's great. Anybody else? Everybody should have something. Yes. In less than 24 hours, I'm going to be leaving for Indiana to have Thanksgiving with my family for the first time in five years. Oh, well, Lord, pour out your blessings on them. Keep awesome. them safe and give them a good time. Amen. Anybody else? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's always sad when somebody's sick, right? Yes. Don't, don't you have a blessing, Ray? A little, little four-legged blessing? I have a third animal that I have been training in 18 weeks. Aw, 18 weeks? That's it. Wow. You know, God cares for us. And I have seen <clears throat> with, um, with cancer patients, little ones, because I've spent a lot of time at Boston Children's Hospital with my own kids, that some of these dogs are, can do things that everybody else can't, you know, stand right there. But they sense when something's about to happen and are right there to be the in-between. Did you know that Jesus is our in-between? He's even better than a dog, right? Yeah. They can sense something happen, but he knows when something's gonna happen way ahead of time. What can he do for us? He surrounds us with his angels of protection to, to take our motorcycle all the way on a long trip. He, he keeps us safe when, you know, he speaks to our heart and says, Get thee out of bed and go to church this morning. <laughs> yes, yes. He does all those little things that sometimes we don't give him credit for. Amen? Amen. So you guys got to have more than one blessing or two blessings this morning. And we're going to sing uh, another song called In My Life, Lord, Be Glorified. And in each of those situations, in a depression, in gladness, in sadness, Lord, be glorified. In frustration, I don't, you, I can identify because my four girls are, mm, some days it's wonderful, other days it's not so wonderful as they're all going, I'm not going to be your friend. Yes, you got a blessing? Or you just like to raise your hand? You have a blessing? What's your blessing? Yes. Yes. And you got a blessing too? Do I go at church? Yes. Oh, you're at church. Yes, and we're glad. Do you know we're glad you came to church? And this is the Sunday school teacher right in front of you. Yes, you don't know how much you're blessing all the people in this congregation this morning. Let's, let's, anybody else before we sing? In my life, Lord, be glorified. in my heart. In my heart, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In my heart, Lord, be glorified today. In our homes. In my home, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In my home, Lord, be 
taught this to my, my children, my four, when they were little. And now I watched their mommies teach that same song to my grandkids. I walked into my grandkids' house in Chittenango yesterday to celebrate the youngest first birthday, and I heard a, f a flurry of, Grammy! And all these little kids come running. You know what a blessing that is to see those smile faces? What a blessing it is to have these kids here today. Thank you. That is a gift that you're giving us today. Jesus is our amazing grace. He amazingly gets us through every day. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Thank you that you're forever there for us. Thank you that you died on a cross to open a door for us, that you will always be there for us. You'll be there when we're frustrated. You'll be there when we're overjoyed. You'll be there when we're terribly depressed. You're there for us when you're sick. You're there for us when we're in health. You're there for us when we're lonely. You're there for us when we're overwhelmed. And we lift up this service and we ask that you would touch every single heart here, Lord, and that you'd meet every need and you would encourage us through the listening to the pastor's word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.
Good morning, everyone. Those of you who are here all the time know what this candle represents. But for those who don't, every week we light this candle to remind us to pray for our soldiers, for our servicemen and women, wherever they are, just to keep us reminded that we need to pray for them. Because it's so easy to let all the other things that are going on in our world to just kind of crowd out things like that. So we're going to take a moment to pray. Before I do, I do want to mention we're beginning Thanksgiving week. Uh, we've got a whole lot of things to be thankful for. <laughs> These songs that we've just been thinking reminds us about that. And as we think about the blessings that have been mentioned by some of us, we've got a lot of things to be thankful for. One of them, of course, is that we live in a country with all kinds of freedoms, a lot more than in any other country in this world. And the reason we have this country and all those freedoms has an awful lot to do with our armed services, with our soldiers, our service members, wherever they may be. We need to keep them in prayer because, you know, obviously, a whole lot of them aren't going to be home for Thanksgiving. They're going to be elsewhere serving our country, serving you and me. And we need to keep them in mind. Let's take a moment to pray. My dear Lord, I do come to you today remembering the men and women of our armed services and the different ways that they protect us and the blessing they are to us behind the scenes that we usually don't even take time to think about. God, I know you know each one of them, where they are, whether they're your children or whether they're people who are not saved but, have, but are out there serving us, serving this country of ours anyway. Father, whichever, they all need your help. They need the blessing that only you can give to keep them safe where they are, to protect them, to give them peace and comfort for those who know you as Savior, I'm sure it's a little easier because they know they have a God that they can look to and trust and depend on. But even those who are not saved in our services, Lord, they're out there serving us, and they need your protection and your blessing. And Lord, if you can, just bring somebody near to them with the Word of God. Cause them to see their need for a Savior and to be drawn to you. And Lord, I just ask for this, for our soldiers. I ask for their families at home, missing them, especially now at holiday time, things like that. And carrying on all the extra work that it involves when one of the family is not there. So I ask you, God, to, to reach into each of those different situations because you know each, every single individual and what they're going through. So I ask for your blessing, Lord God, in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning. It's nice to see everybody out today, even though the weather doesn't look too promising. Okay. Our announcements today is Monday, this week, uh, art class at 1 o'clock. She's not sure that it'll be one next week, the following Monday, because she doesn't know if she'll be back from her trip or not. On Tuesday, we have, at 11 o'clock, our senior citizen get-together. Lunch is prepared and served to us from the Office of the Aging, and we socialize, play games. Yes. I need to have confirmation today if you're coming. Okay. 
On Wednesday at 645 is prayer meeting and Bible study. Uh, everybody is welcome. And if you can't make it here in person, you can catch us on Zoom. Just let my husband know your email address and he'll make sure you get the notice. Next Sunday at 9.30 is the adult Sunday school. At 10.30, um, the message will be from Romans 11, 11.25, only faith can save. And at noon is a potluck dinner. No. Change that. Didn't you change it during our meeting? For December. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, in the kitchen, we have a book borrowing, or yeah, we have a blessing table. Uh, there's always something nice and neat that somebody can use out there. So take a look and take whatever you want, or if you have something that you think would be a treasure to somebody else, you can always drop it off there. In the lobby, we have a book borrowing and a movie borrowing um, corner. Um, we have right now some movies missing uh, that someone didn't sign out. And I just want to remind everybody, the notebook is out there. And you, it's got a description of all the movies. And it also has pages where you can sign out what movie you took, when you took it, and when you bring it back. We'd appreciate it if... Uh, anybody has them to let us know and uh, have a good day. If I could have two people come forward as ushers. The little things. Those who those who sow also reap. And it comes down to it that we must remember that what we reap, we sow. And what we sow, if we sow goodness, we'll also, and generously give, we can also reap. There's a little story here. Mr. Bobby was shopping when he received a text message from a fire department. A one-story house, child trapped inside. I was, I was picking out gifts for a family in our our engine house had adopted. Remembering the quails who had been fighting fires in Memphis for 24 years. And I had a sinking feeling as I got in my car and headed over. The last time I'd seen the quails had been on, on Beach Nut Street. I had to install smoke detectors at, at, their, at their table house. He had been on a secret mission to see if they needed an extra boost during the holidays. And he discovered that the, 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 their, their children were sleeping on bare mattresses, and he found out two of the boys were playing outside in 30-degree weather in shoes with, with no shoes or a coat. The quails learned that Leonard and Tub had been Tubbs had been their best. They do, were doing their best to make ends meet. When Bobby told them that his team wanted to be a secret Santa and buy the kids toys, at first I thought we didn't need any. They didn't need any help. The Batman's recalled, it really touched me. I told him that the kids really needed warm clothes. That's exactly what the quails, was, quails were shopping for on December 9th. The winter jackets for Christopher, seven. Joy Joy for four. Madison, one. And, and two-month-old Charles. While we driving down Beechnut Street, he dialed the bomb his cell phone and answered on the first ring and, and heard screaming. The house is on fire, and Jojo's trapped inside. By the time the quails reached the house, the family had gotten out, but their home was severely damaged. His co-workers had found Jojo hiding under a pile of clothes in the, in the back bedroom. He, was stopped, and he had stopped breathing, had been given CPR, and rushed to the hospital. The quails learned that Jojo was now on life support and might not make it, though the night, through the night. He rushed to the hospital with Mr. Frank, Eskew, who placed a stuffed teddy bear in, in the firefighter's suit next to Jojo's bed, just to keep praying while the little boy would, would op praying that he would, the little boy would open his eyes. Batman recalled that there was no one else, I could, nothing else that he could do. They were pumping soot of 
as black as tar out of it, the young, young boy's lungs. After a few days, Jojo regained consciousness. The tubes were taken out of her throat, and he began to slowly recover. The newspaper and TV stations got a hold of the story and the secret Santa mission of the coils, and his fellow firefighters snowballed. Before long, the fire station was overflowing with boxes of toys, food, toiletry, towels, clothing. People called, wanted to donate furniture, appliances, and, and the tubs had moved their kids into a new rental home. By Christmas Eve, Jojo was ready to leave the hospital and the firefighters were ready to deliver their family their own Christmas miracle. These guys aren't just firefighters, says Batman. They're our guardian angels. And if they hadn't installed that smoke detector that first day, that they came over, the house would have gone, the house we wouldn't have known then the first started, then they would not have, they went that extra 10 miles to give us a Christmas. It's the little things that can mean the most. Do not, that's all there is, the little things. That smoke detector made the difference. They, we, that, that fire department sewed a, a fire detect, detection device and reaped a, a family saved. It's just the little things. That, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the offering that's presented today. And let us look at the little things. Sometimes those little things make all the difference in the world. I pray, Lord, that you take and bless this time. Bless every single soul here. And as we come and go and fellowship with one another, that we remember the, the peace that you've given to this earth that only you could give. I thank you, Jesus, in your gracious name. Amen. Pray, God from whom Thank you, folks. And again, welcome officially. Glad to have you with us. Got to make a note here for myself so that I remember it. So excuse me for just a brief moment. I just had a text message arrive that I need to work with. Okay, I'm glad to see you all this morning, and I'm glad that we are able to be here. But looking around, obviously we've got a bunch of people missing today. I know about um, quite a few of them, but we'll see. So I want you guys to look around like we always do. And now you tell me who's missing. Damon and Chrissy are missing. Damon has bronchitis. And he's not going to be with us today. Hopefully, we're praying that he'll be better real soon. Now, most of you know, he's also got asthma, so that combination is not a good thing. Uh, it's a little tough. Who else isn't here? Yeah, Linda Dasno is not here. I expected her today, but I know, of course, that she missed last Sunday because her car was out of commission. She told me she thought she would have it back Thursday, but maybe she didn't get it back. I'll have to call her and find out. Okay, who else? Look around, because there's a bunch more. Terry is not here. <laughs> this one, I got a text message from him this morning saying he wouldn't make it. Don't bother to pick him up because he has to run some errands for his girlfriend. My daughter Katina is not here. Her break, broken ankle is giving her a lot of problems today. 
the weather doesn't help with that. I think all of you who have ever had any problems with broken bones or with arthritis knows how that can be interesting. Um, Nick Harris and his family are not here. He called me and said that his little daughter is sick. I can't remember her name. Do you? I'm sorry, but at the moment her name escapes me, but his little daughter is sick, so they're not going to make it. And that's the last one I know about, is Debbie Nicholas. I know she has missed a few times because she was busy getting her um, apartment ready for winter and getting everything rearranged. I think she's looking for another place for the winter. But I do not know. I haven't talked to her in several days, so I'll call her. Thank you. Yeah, Rose is not here, and that kind of surprises me. She was here Wednesday night for a prayer meeting, and I haven't heard from her, so I will call her, too. She might. She... <laughs> You're remembering last Sunday she showed up at 10.30 or so. Or, no, she showed up at 11, thinking the meeting was at 11.30 instead of 10.30. But I think we got her straightened out on that one. <laughs> but we shall see. Is that it? Or is there anybody else I need to check on? I think that's it. That's enough. Man, that's a whole list of, that are not here today. Is somebody asking about Asana's husband? Yeah. He's still away, but he'll be back when? 28th. He misses Thanksgiving. <laughs> okay. Personal question. Have you got things arranged for Thanksgiving for your family, or do you know what you're going to do? All right, talk to me afterwards, because there's something that um, my wife and I are going to do here at the church for Thanksgiving for those who are, whose families aren't available or whatever. Um, okay, I think that's it. Let's take a minute to pray before we get to the Word. Heavenly Father, you are such an incredible God. As we come together and think about the blessings that were mentioned, and I know thousands more probably that we haven't mentioned, because it's so easy. We take things for granted that you do for us day after day, and we don't stop to think about it. I praise you and thank you, Lord God, for so many things. And as we go into this Thanksgiving season, we really need to kind of remember that song, Count Your Blessings. Think about all the things that you're doing for us day after day. Father, I thank you that we have, as a country, this idea of a special day to say thanksgiving to you. But we need to do it a lot more often than that, don't we? Especially as Christians, we need to think about your blessings day after day and give you thanks and praise and glory and honor. Father, we've got a lot of things on our heart and mind. Our church family is going through a lot with sickness and with other problems. But God, you know all about it. And so I ask you, oh Lord God, to be with the, our church family, our friends, our visitors. Bless and strengthen them. Thank you for Austin and his family being here today with us. Thank you for all the blessings, the people especially, that you bring into our lives. Lord, as we look forward to today, to the, the time to speak together about your word and just to rejoice in who you are, I ask especially that you will be moving through this time together with us, helping us to be drawn to you, to your word, to better be understanding the things that you're doing in our life and be able to praise you and glorify you for them. And we thank you, God for being such a God. In Jesus' name, amen. And there is one other thing I need to do before we actually get into the Word. Almost forgot. You know my memory, folks. <laughs> um, never claim to have the best memory in the world. And
as I'm getting a little older, it's getting a little shorter. Funny thing about that. Roger, would you please come up here? I think most of you are aware that Roger has a problem with cancer going in for surgery tomorrow morning. And I'm sure that makes him a little nervous. I know it would me. <laughs> so we're going to take time. Why don't some of you guys come on up here and join us and we're going to pray for Roger. Anybody that wants to, just come on up here and we'll gather around and pray. I see we still got a couple coming, so let's let them get up here. Heavenly Father, you know Roger. You know his bless, the blessing that he is to this church. You know the blessing that he is to many of us just as a friend. And you know what kind of a wonderful guy he is. So we as a church family want to pray for him, bring him to you. He's going through this situation tomorrow. I know it's kind of on his mind and heart. I know that Linda's worried about him. So I pray for them both, Lord God. First of all, that you'll be with him as far as this surgery is concerned. Guide everything that has to do with that. The doctors and nurses and everybody involved. And give them not only their best skills, but also the concern and the commitment to do the very best for Roger. I pray that you will guide that surgery, that you'll guide him even before he ever gets there to give him peace of mind and heart, remind him that you're in charge of it all, you got it. I know that even though the doctors think of it as a minor surgery, comparatively, uh, any time that we're having surgery, it matters a lot to us. And so I know it matters to you, God, because you love us so much. So I pray for Roger and his family and for those who will be helping him, taking him down and bringing him back. I just pray for every little detail of that operation and all of the preparations and the return. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, my friend. And thank you, folks. All right, now if you are not in Psalms 34 by now, please get there. And if you don't have a Bible, there's one there in the pews somewhere, <laughs> always available. Psalms chapter 34. And of course, this is a Thanksgiving message because this is the week as we're approaching Thanksgiving Day. <sighs> interesting day, interesting week for my family for more than one reason. Obviously, because of... Uh, the great-grandson just born. And then we've got two birthdays this coming week. So it's easy in the family to be, not only the holiday, but all of this going on at once. It gets hectic. Funny how that works. But you know what? All of those are blessings. All those things are good things to be thanking the Lord for. All right, Psalms 34. I'm going to read through this. It's not that long. It's 22 verses. And we'll see if I get to talk about it all or not. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, our time always seems to go by way too fast. Psalms 34, starting in verse 1. David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear me thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And then he switches down to one of the reasons. Just one of them. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and they were lightened. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. And then he switches over to talk to other 
people who are putting their faith in God. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Then he tells you how to do that. How to ensure that you will see many good days. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Then he says, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, that not even one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. But the Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. He covers a lot of territory, doesn't he? <laughs> David saying thank you to God. Now this was written during the time that he was on the run when Saul was sending the army to try to kill him because Saul knew that God was planning to make David the next king. And Saul didn't want to lose his kingdom. So Saul is sending the army after David to kill him and David's on the run. So he's facing all kinds of problems. But, even knowing that, he looks at the situation and he says, Thank you, God, that you always take care of me. I especially like that verse 4. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. He says, I can praise God because I remember what he did for me, <laughs> what he has done in the past. And so I know he'll keep right on doing it. That's a great attitude to have, isn't it? Yeah, you and me. Do we have any problems in this world? <laughs> no. Nah. Yeah, don't I wish. Of course we do. I love the fact that the Bible is very, uh, what's the right word to say? Very realistic about our life in this world. God never says he's going to make it easy for us. Not in those exact terms, of course. Now, you know, I'm sure all of you know that there are some preachers that teach. Come and give your life to the Lord. The moment you accept Christ as your favor and give yourself to the Lord, everything will be easy. They ain't reading my Bible. <laughs> he doesn't say that. He tells you that in this world, you will have trouble. But he also says, and I'll go with you every single moment, and I will provide a blessing in every situation. I love Romans, where he says simply, Romans 8, 28, that um, all things work together for good to them that love God. Now you know, and I know, that as we look at these individual things that come flying into our life, a lot of them don't look good from our point of view. But that isn't what God said. He didn't say they would look good for us or that we would think of them as good. He said that he would make something good come out of them. All things work together for good. He doesn't let anything come into your life without having a purpose for it that will end up being better for you. Our problem is that we're so short-sighted as human beings that we can't see all the things he does. We don't know what it is he's doing. 
And so we get sick, we have a car accident, especially if a loved one passes away or something terrible like that. We get all upset and get all worried and get all scared. That's just us. That's because we're human. And God knows that. And he doesn't hold it against us, but he keeps on reminding us he's going to make it work good. Though we can't necessarily see it at that moment. Usually don't. Sometimes we can look back, usually years later, and see, oh, hey, yeah, there were some real good things that came out of that. Sometimes we can't even see them, even then. No matter. He keeps his word. <laughs> Whether I can see it or not, he still kept his word. And I know there's been a lot of times in my life when I'm praying, Lord, what are you doing? Because it sure don't make sense to me. I'm not as smart as he is. He knows what he's doing. And so I have to simply trust his promises because he always keeps his promises. David says, I can be thankful. Even this horrible situation where somebody is sending an army out to kill me. That's because I know what God has done for me in the past. I know he'll keep right on taking care of me. You and I, as far as I know, have never had anybody, oh, I'll be careful about this. I better not exactly say that. I was about to say, I don't think any of us has ever had anybody out to kill you. I've had circumstances where I wasn't quite sure where I've had guns pointed at me. Um, that has to do with my trip to when I was in Africa. Teaching a seminary in Africa during the middle of a rebellion can get interesting. <laughs> but anyway, other than that, other than some other circumstances that have to do with difficult situations. Um, whether or not somebody is out to get you, whether, probably not literally, but um, or whatever else it is that comes into your life. <laughs> He's still in charge. He's still got this. And he still knows what's happening to you and he's always already ready to turn it into something good. Already has it in his mind. But let's look at some of these other things here. I like verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear God and delivereth them. You and I don't often think about the ministry of angels in our own lives. Because in the New Testament times, and from then on, we generally don't see how the angels are ministering to us. Of course, the Bible tells us that that's one of their primary purposes are of the angels of God is to minister to his children. But we don't see it, so we don't realize what's going on around us. I know there's been a lot of times when I've been driving down 81, for instance, and realize... God's timing may have easily have saved me from being hurt in an accident or something, especially one time Jeannie might remember when we get to an accident scene and it was a car just like two cars ahead of us that got nailed. Um, Lord, how much time is there? <laughs> if I was going a little faster, I might have been right there, you know? Things like that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I use myself as an example a few too many times. But i got to tell you this one because it always really struck me. Way back when I worked for the State Department of Transportation, one time I had to drive from Watertown to Plattsburgh. Um, I had a carload of uh, engineers from the Albany office, the main office, that were following me. I was taking them up to inspect a job up there in Plattsburgh. We're driving along. I'm in my state car. They're in the car right behind me. Going up, we went up Route 3 because the job was right on Route 3 going into Plattsburgh. Many of you probably know that route. Well, there is an intersection where the road comes over from Governor and ties into Route 3. Major intersection. No traffic light or anything. 
just a stop sign on their end. So as I'm going by that intersection, the car in front of me, actually a pickup truck in front of me, another car comes off that Governor Road, broadsides him. The car in front of or the vehicle in front of me. We all stopped, got out, everybody was okay. I think that vehicle was probably totaled. But I thank the Lord that we were okay, that they were okay, and we went on our way. Um, about an hour out of Plattsburgh, the car behind my friend's car got totaled. <laughs> Two in that one trip. Again, nobody was hurt, but that car was mangled. And he got out of the car, the driver, who was a good friend of mine, the driver of the state car behind me, got out and walked up to me and says, are your trips always like this? <laughs> no. <laughs> but it sure reminded me, the Lord protects his people. <laughs> One in front of me and one just two cars back. No. God's hand was there, that's for sure. And I know there's been other times, and I'm sure there's lots of times I don't even know about. Where just Haven't you ever had times where you're delayed on a trip for some reason, construction or whatever, and you think, Lord, why are you holding me up? Well, there's probably a good reason. Probably a real good reason. But we don't know because we don't see those things. Here David is reminded, God said his angels protect us. We never see that, do we? But I'm awful glad to know that it's true. Now, does that mean nothing bad ever happens? No, of course not. We've already talked about that. God lets some bad things into our life, but he does it with the purpose of making something good out of them. And I don't care what it is or how bad it seems to us. That promise is still true. Let's look on down to verse 12. I like that because it's where he's talking about how he, he tells people how to have a happy life, basically. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? He says, here's how you do it. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guile. What does the word guile mean? We don't use that one too often anymore, except in stories. Evil, yeah, but a special kind of evil. Deceit. Don't deceive other people. Don't say something that isn't true, or don't let people believe something that isn't true by just keeping your mouth shut. That's also deceit, isn't it? Um, he says, so watch what you say and know when to speak and how to say it. Man, oh man, does the Bible ever talk about that a lot, actually. Especially if you turn to the book of James, you'll see where G he spends a whole chapter, I think it's chapter 4, talking about how the tongue is a terrible evil if you let it go off on its own says the tongue is the one of the hardest things for us to control because we just talk without thinking. I'm sure every one of you have known people, maybe know right now, somebody who just says whatever comes to their mind and it's oftentimes hurtful. And oftentimes it's opinion which hasn't even been, you don't even know if it's true or not. Those things get us in trouble because we need to think about what we're saying. Um, I saw a list of things that somebody had written up for to evaluate before they say something about somebody else. First, is it true? Second, is it necessary to even tell them? And then there was another one, I think, about something about, is it kind? And if not, how can I say it in a better manner? Yeah, things like that. Because you and I 
are prone to just say something and then realize afterwards, uh, that wasn't the best way to do that. Oh, yeah. David says, that's one of those things that'll help you to have a happier life, an easier life. Pay attention to what you say. Be careful with your tongue. Then he says, depart from evil and do good. Well, that's pretty simple. <laughs> but I remember for years, I've seen a, a guy who had a bumper sticker that said, how did, how did it word it? It was very simple. Something like God's best advice. Keep right. Like you see on a road sign where you're driving, it says keep right. Well, yeah, that kind of says what God is talking about. Stay the way you should be. Do what's right and stick to it. That's what David's saying down here. Pretty simple. If you want your life to be easier and to be pleasing to God, do what's right. Years ago, just saying that reminded me of something I haven't thought about in a long time because I've read this book probably when I was 16. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere in that area. Um, but it was a self-help book. But it was talking about how to prosper in this life. Not just financially, but in all ways. And one of the chapters was entitled, Do What's Right, Just Because It's Right. Not for any other reason, because it's the right thing to do. Good advice. Good way of putting it. Then down here he goes on to say, kind of I guess you would say as an incentive or a reminder of why these things are all good things for us to do. First of all, because God said so, but 15 and 16. Nice little couplet where he puts together two verses that are contrast to each other. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. Well, that's a good thing to think about. God is watching us, looking over us, always watching out to help us and protect us, always listening to when we pray. But then he turns it around. The next verse says, The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. In other words, the Lord is watching everybody on this earth. Those who are living like he wants... He's always blessing. Those who aren't, don't get that. <laughs> Pretty simple. God is saying, pay attention, because I'm always, I see everything. I know what's going on, and I respond to it. Which leads me to think of another verse, which is also true, and which we need to keep in mind sometimes. Well, obviously, if it's in the Bible, it's true, but... I think that's something to do with the way my jacket is moving and that microphone is working. Sorry about all of that noise. Um, the verse I'm thinking about is there's a verse that says very simply that the wicked see that God's punishment doesn't come instantly and so they just keep right on being wicked. Yeah, that's true too. That has to do with the fact that God is very patient. He doesn't deal with sin instantly. Man, I'm glad he doesn't. Do you guys remember, because I mentioned this to those who have been a part of my congregation for very long, our church family will know that I mentioned this at least a year ago. There are three incidents in the Bible that I think are always put there for kind of a reminder to us. There are three incidents recorded in the Bible, two in the Old Testament and one in the New, where God did judge sin instantly. The first one, you remember that Moses' brother Aaron was the first high priest of the people of Israel while they were in that 40 years in the wilderness? He had four sons who were his assistants. Two of them Apparently got drunk, from what I understand in that passage. And went into the temple, and it was their job to offer incense to the Lord at the time of prayer. 
Well, they chose, instead of using the incense that God had commanded, which was specified exactly how to make it and everything, they chose to use something else that they made up. To worship God their own way, instead of the way God said to. God struck them both dead. Instantly. Punishment at the moment of the sin. Um, thankfully, he doesn't usually do that. <laughs> If he did, you and I'd be in a lot of trouble. So would everybody else. He's very patient with us. He offers forgiveness over and over again. The second incident is later on in the Old Testament. And again, it's something that seems little to us. And yet he made an example of somebody. That was during the time of David. It would have been a little later in his life after this psalm was written. When he was actually king. Um, the Ark of the Lord, the, the box that God had commanded Moses to make and put the Ten Commandments in, and that it was always kept in the temple. Well, at that time, the temple hadn't been built yet, so it was kept in the tent, the tabernacle. Well, for some reason, it had been taken from there at God's command and carried with the army when they went to battle. And... and they didn't bring it back to the temple. They had placed it in another location um, at Shiloh. So David says, that's not what God commanded. He, so he says, we've got to bring the ark back to the temple. Which is good. But David forgot that God also gave some very special commands about how the ark was to be moved. It was to be carried with staves through the rings in the side of the ark by priests. And nobody except the priests, were ever supposed to touch it. So instead he arranges to have a, bun a procession, almost a parade, and have the loaded onto an ox cart. And the oxes were hauling it back with some of David's um, government civil servants escorting it instead of the priests. One of the oxen stumbled the cart started to tip, and one man reached out and grabbed the side of the ark to keep it from tipping over, which was, there's nothing wrong with that. And my thought, he's probably trying to be, do a good thing. The only problem was he wasn't a priest. He didn't have the right to touch the ark, and God struck him dead. Judged instantly. That's scary. But he makes the point that he has the right to do that. He wants to. Um, my time's all gone, so I better not even get to the third one. <laughs> the third one's in the New Testament. But do you see what I mean? As we look through this Psalm of David, as he's thanking the Lord for so many things, it also brings up some other things to mind, doesn't it? How good God has been to us, and even these things. But the fact that God does watch over the whole world, and is keeping an eye on those who are not living righteously too, part of that is that he's making sure that they don't cause us a lot of trouble. Sometimes he lets them cause us some problems, obviously. But obviously, again, that's in his, with his hand on them. I love that one situation in the book of Job where Satan wants to cause trouble for Job. And what it tells us in that first chapter of the book of Job is he couldn't do anything until he came to God and got permission. And God gave him permission, but he told him, you can do this much, no more. I think that's exactly what happens in our lives. He's not allowed, Satan is not allowed to give us more problems than God is willing to let us go through and learn from and grow stronger from. That's a hard concept because our first thought is God should never bring anything into our life but good. But then I stop and think that how does a soldier train? He trains by going through the hard stuff to learn how to handle it. How does any of us learn how to deal with the hard times? By going through them with God's help in growing as we go through them.
And God promises a blessing at the end of each one of those. But we don't always recognize that. I'm over time. <laughs> I love talking about the Word of God. And there's so much in this psalm. But it boils down to David saying thank you to God for a whole lot of things, doesn't it? And we got a lot of things to be thankful for in our lives. Well, we got hard times, every one of us, a lot of them. But we also have some real good things that God does over and over. I guess my favorite promise of them all, if I really have one, there's so many, but it's probably the promise, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He's always right there. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for so many things. Man, oh man, as I look at my own life and see the things you've brought me through, sometimes I'm amazed that I'm still here. But Lord of God, you know exactly what you're doing. And you have blessings in store for us every day. I just wish I could see them more clearly because I know that I don't thank you anywhere near the thing as much as I should. I pray for each one of us here today, God. Bless in our lives and help us to see and recognize more of those blessings. Thank you for these folks that are gathered here. Please work in their hearts and their minds throughout the day. Bring your word, your scriptures, back to their mind to strengthen and bless them. And work in us. Help each one of us to walk closer to you, to live more the way you want us to. And thank you, God, for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, folks. With a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ. His song. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for this time together this morning and for the opportunity just to gather around your word and, and worship you. Sing your praises, rejoice in the word, and just remember what an incredible God you are. As we go out from here, I ask you to bless each one. Guide us and strengthen us. Whatever we're going to find ahead of us today and in the week ahead, guide and direct so that we can live it in a way that will please you. Thank you, God, because we need your strength all the time. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, folks.